The San Jacinto Monument is one of the most recognizable symbols of Texas independence. It's certainly the first thing anyone sees when they visit the San Jacinto Battleground. That's because the monument is massive. It's 567 feet tall, which makes it 12 feet taller than the Washington Monument. It's topped with a 35 foot tall star. The star has nine points, so that a five pointed star can be seen from all directions. Contrary to popular belief, the star wasn't secretly added to make the San Jacinto Monument taller than the Washington Monument. Construction of the San Jacinto Monument was partially funded by federal money, and that money came with the implied understanding that the San Jacinto Monument wouldn't be taller than 555 feet, the height of the Washington Monument, but no one ever specified how that height would be measured. Sketches of the star were included in the original plans submitted to Washington. Those plans listed the monument from the top of the star to the base of the tower as 549 feet tall, which it is. However, those plans neglected to include the two terraces the monument sits on top of. The final height from the bottom of the terrace to the top of the star is 567.3 feet. Don't you know, everything's bigger in Texas. The monument is built of reinforced concrete and faced in Cordova shellstone mine near Austin. The shellstone, which formed more than 100 million years ago, is studded with fossilized shells. These fossils are the remnant of the Western Interior Seaway, the warm shallow sea that stretched from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean during the mid-Cretaceous period. At the base of the column, there are eight carved panels depicting important moments from Texas's early history. They were carved by sculptor William McVeigh, an instructor at the Rice Institute. On the monument's base, the story of the Texas Revolution is carved into the stone. Construction began on April 21, 1936, the 100th anniversary of the Battle of San Jacinto. The monument was designed by two Houstonians, architect Alfred Finn and engineer Robert Cubbins, and built by the W.S. Bellows Construction Company, a Houston and Dallas-based firm. Finn originally wanted to build the monument along the Buffalo Bayou. He described his idea as a magnificent white marble staircase that would be like a series of benches along the water for people to sit on. However, one of the landscape designers convinced him to move it because he was afraid that when the ship channel flooded, the oil from the water would stain the steps. Finn agreed, and the monument was built on the highest point at the battleground, in between the Texian camp and the Mexican camp. The San Jacinto Monument is more than just a symbol of Texas independence. It's a symbol of Texas ingenuity. Building a colossal tower on the wet clay soil of the Texas coast was a technical feat, and the monument is a historical civil engineering landmark because of the new methods developed during its construction. The first challenge was that the monument is built on wet clay soil, not bedrock. Unless precautions were taken, over time the weight of the monument would squeeze moisture out of the clay, causing the soil to shift and shrink. To make things even more difficult, the Texas coast is battered by storms and hurricanes. The foundation had to be strong enough to support a monument that could withstand winds up to 125 miles per hour. To get around this, Robert Cummins, the monument's engineer, designed a novel spread footing foundation. It's a 124 square foot mat shaped like a pyramid with a top cut off, five feet thick at the outside and 15 feet thick at the center. The final slab could support more than 146 million pounds. This type of foundation became the prototype for how to build high rise structures on expansive soils and in areas hit by tropical storms. To prevent the slab from forming cold joints, the concrete had to be laid in one continuous pour. Any delay or interruption would have meant that the foundation would have had to been torn out, likely bankrupting the construction company, so they prepared for every possible problem. Two spare mixers and two spare cranes were on hand if anything broke, and the construction crew filled tanks with a four-hour supply of water for the mixers, just in case anything happened to the pipes or the pumps. In case of rain, a large circus tent covered the site. All the workers had to be unemployed men who lived within 20 miles of the site. Out of the 150 men who worked on the project, only 35 had worked in construction before. And because pouring the foundation was at the very start of the project, there hadn't even been a chance for on-site training. It took the crew 57 hours to pour the foundation. That's nearly two and a half days of non-stop work. At the time, it was the longest single pouring of concrete ever reported. During the pour, the crew went through 3,800 meat sandwiches and 5,700 cups of coffee. The scaffolding was another innovation. Traditionally, a structure like the San Jacinto Monument would be built using scaffolding that starts on the ground and works its way up the outside of the shaft. That's how the Washington Monument was built. 
W.S. Bellows, however, decided that was too expensive, so instead they built an interior structural tower. The scaffolding of steel beams was built at the center of what would eventually become the shaft of the monument, and five construction platforms were built around that scaffolding. These platforms could be raised and lowered by a winch at the rate of about one foot every five minutes. From these different platforms, builders could place the steel, build the forms, pour the concrete, remove the forms, and set the stone all at the same time. Using the scaffolding, the crew was able to raise 24 feet of tower per week in good weather. One of the first things people ask when they see the monument is, how on earth did they get the star up there? The answer is they didn't. The 222 ton star had to be built in place at the very top of the monument. First, the architect built a one inch scale model out of plywood to test the shape. Then, a full size wooden model was built on the ground and used to draw up a set of precise plans. Once the plans were complete, a new construction platform was built at the top of the now completed tower using I-beams that cantilevered out over the walls, 500 feet above the ground. The star was built out of stone, steel, and concrete. Pre-cut materials were brought up the interior of the shaft to the observation deck, then passed out the windows and lifted to their final position. The San Jacinto Monument was dedicated on April 21, 1939, three years after construction began. At the time, it was the world's tallest freestanding concrete tower. Despite the extreme working conditions and the lack of experienced workers, the monument was completed on schedule and no one was seriously injured during the construction. Today, the San Jacinto Monument towers over the San Jacinto Battleground State Historic Site, a testament to everything Texans can accomplish when we put our minds to it.